What's up guys, Hugh Jimsa here. Today we're back again, and in this video we're gonna be playing some Vi in the jungle. So overall, Vi is still a pretty solid pick in this patch. They aren't necessarily broken or underpowered, but if you pick Vi in the right cases, Vi can definitely be a monster, and especially a good frontline. So the main reason why I actually picked Vi in this match is because we're going up against an enemy Kha'Zix, and Vi does a really good job of shutting down Kha'Zix. And the main reason for that is because you have really good gap closing potential, so you can easily crowd control up Kha'Zix on his engage. Plus, with all your mobility and everything, you can make it so Kha'Zix can't get isolation damage off on targets. Because, for instance, if Kha'Zix catches somebody out in the middle of a fight, you could just ult the Kha'Zix and it takes your right to him, so now your teammate's not isolated. But to start off with, I'm going to be taking the red buff, and I'm just keeping an eye on these lanes over here. Trying to decide where I want to go after I take my first couple of camps. So right now I'm just trying to decide do I want to do a one sided jungle clear and only clear my red side or do I want to go towards the top side of the map. And looking at my top lane over here you can see my duo lane is super far pushed up. Like you can see how like how much of positioning advantage they have. So I actually decide to just move towards the top side of the map and play for that top scuttle over there. Because now if a scuttle fight or anything happens I know I'm going to be able to get the rotate from my duo lane first. Because if you just look at that positioning, if a fight happens on that river, I for sure, like, my duo lane will be there way before their duo lane. So I decide to just go for this top scuttle. So now I'm just going to be farming up my blue. Going to be taking Gromp. But one nice thing about Vi is Vi actually has a really nice early game jungle clear. So you can actually take four camps before you even go to the scuttle. So you can see, I can still easily grab these four camps over here, but we see Kha'Zix is on this top side of the map over here. So that is something that we need to be cautious of. And you can see we have the Diana here. So we're able to force out Kha'Zix's flash. I don't flash just yet because I know their enemy duo is behind, but I do see this Echo getting caught out and I am able to take him down. And that's really the power of playing to your strong side. So as you can see, I pinged that I wanted to go to that top scuttle very, very early. Like, I pinged it like 30 seconds before that scuttle even spawned. I pinged it as soon as I knew that that was what I wanted to do on the map. So then at least my dual lane and my mid lane both knew that I was going to make a play for that scuttle. And they were at least aware and looking at the map if there was a contest or if anybody showed up to try and take it from me. Then they would be able to get to rotate in. And you can see how much of an advantage playing on the strong side gives you because my teammates just had full positioning advantage there. We were literally deep into their jungle this early in the game. Whereas if I'd done this on the boss side of the map with the Darius versus, versus Riven matchup, that's a pretty even matchup right now and nobody really has a clear advantage. So that could have gone badly pretty fast. So now I know Kha'Zix is clearing his blue side jungle because he just cleared only his red side and then he went to that scuttle over there. So I know that now he's clearing his blue side and he'll be playing on this side of the map for a while. So I'm just taking the scuttle. Pretty sure he's around, you can see him right there, and I'm just keeping an eye on this matchup over here. He should have seen that Kha'Zix was there, I try and ping it out, he knows it. It's really hard to gank Riven is something that I'll say, that's one of the best parts about Riven, is you have so much mobility, like Riven is such a strong champ right now, even in the jungle. That's definitely something that I want to play a bit in this patch. But now I'm farming up my jungle, I'm keeping an eye on this mid lane and the bot lane especially, because I know that Kha'Zix is on blue side right now. So just watching out, seeing what is going on in the map. But you can see our the duo, or the solo lane just reset, and the mid lane is playing pretty safe. So Kazix really has no good gank. But now I decide to rotate to the top side, and I'm actually pinging him because I know Kazix is moving over to his red buff right now, because he just cleared his blue side just now, and he he clearly doesn't have any good gank. So I know he's gonna be clearing his red side jungle again. So you can see me pinging it on the map, and you can see we actually just caught him on a ward over there. So. We're able to see that he is on that top side. And it's just really nice to ping it out for your teammates if you know where the enemy jungle is. Because by knowing he's on red side, you know the only lanes which he can gank are either the mid lane or that duo lane over there. So really, I'm just ghosting this duo lane over here and making sure that they don't get ganked. And I could easily play for a counter gank if Kha'Zix does go for something crazy. So actually, Kha'Zix was sitting inside of this bush. And I'm thinking if I could get a good engage, but I just back off there. Go back to farming up my jungle. My duo lane knows that they're there, so they should be able to escape if they need to. So you can see, that's pretty good. And it looks like Kha'Zix is just, he's just finishing farming up his red side. I'm going to reset and get my Trinity Force over here. 
I don't really want to overextend into a Galio underneath turret. That is how you get kited back and how you get crowd controlled and died. That's a big mistake a lot of junglers make, especially in the dual lane. Ganking the dual lane is really, really tricky because now there's two chimps and especially supports can throw ganks off because with the extra barriers or some crowd control or something, you can easily mess up a gank. So now I have my ultimate. I'm looking for a good fight over here. Seeing if I can make anything happen. Trying to see if... Maybe we can start something up. So you can see we have all our ultimates off cooldown. And it's actually really key. So I get a good engage there. Get some good damage and then run off. And notice what I do here. I really just play around my backline. I don't dive too deep and I let my backline do their poke. So I let them do their poke. And then when the Kha'Zix engages, I just get him off of the backline. I sadly have to flash out of that. But they do take us down. They actually got an early mid rotate, unfortunately. So the Echo was able to come in there and clean us up. We're able to get the Kha'Zix, but I do go down here. Maybe Diana can pick up the Echo, but that Echo is really fast. Ooh, actually, I think that... Ooh, that's a good knockup by Galio. That was pretty clutch. But now Riven's here. Looks like he should be able to clean this up. He gets a good Flash for stability combo, and he just cleans up and gets a triple kill there. And that is huge. But one big thing to keep in mind is... Um, you really want to pay attention to your teammates' abilities... So, for instance, going for a big fight at this Dragon Pit, having Diana ult is huge, having um, Karma ult is also huge, and having my ult is pretty nice against the Kha'Zix. So, like, for instance, I wouldn't have tried to force this if the Diana's ultimate was down just because I'm duo with the Diana, and um, I know Diana ult is just super important to him to be able to team fight. Because while at ultimate, Diana is way weaker, and especially Diana ult in, like, Dragon Pits and Choke Points, it is huge because you can hit up, you can knock up an entire team, which is completely game changing. So now we force out a bunch of abilities from them and we're heading back this way. I'm seeing if I can get some good like burst damage. I'm really just looking for my burst and then I'm going to back off, but I'm picking them to be careful. And you can see we waited till the Diana is back off cooldown. You could tell from the dots above the ch near the mini map in the top left, right to the right to the right of it. You can see all the champs pictures that green dot above means that they have their ultimates. So you can see I have my ultimate, Diana has their ultimate, Riven has an ultimate. So that's a good fight to take. Plus we'd forced out the Echo ult earlier so we know he didn't have ultimate. And it's just super important to consider who has what ultimate when going for a bit object big objective fights cuz you can really screw your team over and especially like Somebody like a Diana or Ari who needs their champ for mobility and damage. Forcing them into a fight when they don't have that up, you could literally be t leading your team into death, pretty much. And that's why jungle is such an important role, because you could dictate a lot of fights, like what objectives you want to fight over, what rotations you want to do. Because, for instance, if I didn't want to fight over that Herald, I would have just gone and ganked the dual lane. You can see I'm trying to gank the dual lane over here. I get a good ult onto Ezreal. So if maybe I can kill him. I just need one more auto. But unfortunately, they get so many barriers. And I still, to this day, do not know how that Ezreal lived. Because they were literally one shot. I thought I could kill him and then use my first ability as an escape tool there. But turns out I was not able to. It looks like the Galio ult plus the Ezreal barrier was a bit much. And they were barely able to survive that. If the Caitlyn had been in a better position to follow up, we should have been fine there, but unfortunately, that's, that, that gank went kind of south. That's just an unfortunate one. But as for what gameplays I want to do next, I will tell y'all a little secret. I have been working on Lee Sin the past couple days, and I have gotten pretty decent at Lee Sin, because I know a lot of people have been requesting Lee Sin ever since I started up making Wild Rift videos. And I always said Lee Sin isn't really my type of champ, and it is a different playstyle than what I play, but it is something that I can still learn and something that I'm willing, but I have some really fire Lee Sin gameplay, so make sure to like and subscribe if you would like to see that, as I already have that gameplay, and I can definitely upload it in the next day or two. I'm telling you, it is an exciting match. It's like a 4v5 match with an ADC and Mumu running it down bot side, <laughs> running it down the dual lane. And it gets pretty intense. But you can see, I just land my poke and then I get out of there. And then I'm trying to let my backline do some work. And that's really key as Vi to be able to play around your backline because the crowd control that you provide for your team, it can either help you dive or it can help your backline peel. 
So for instance, if you see somebody caught out of position, it could, of course, be very, very useful to engage onto them. But it's also really nice if your teammate's being dove upon by an Echo or a Kha'Zix, getting them off for like a split second can make it so your teammates can create enough distance to where they can actually kite them back pretty effectively. Ooh, looks like... Looks like that person caught out. I don't know why they are overextended that far with no vision or anything, but... I'll let them do them, I guess. <laughs> I'll just mind my own business. I'll try and ping them if I can, but it's okay if they don't listen. It happens. <laughs> but now I got my Guardian Angel and gonna be looking to go for a good engage. We have Diana ult. All of us have our ultimates off cooldown. I'm keeping an eye if they dive these people over here, then I can look for a good counter gank. And that's another really important thing, actually, about tracking the enemy in the early game, the enemy junglers, because... You can set up for some really good counter ganks if you know where they're going to look to gank. But now, I try and get in range to land an ultimate on somebody, but I realize I don't need to, really. And we're able to pick up a kill there. But the big part is, we still have Diana ult, so that's huge. We still have Diana ult, we still have Riven ult. So I'm pretty comfortable taking a fight again if I see an opportunity. So right now, I'm just farming up their jungle. Looks like we want to dive this, which I am okay with. I see Kha'Zix is in mid, so I'm not too worried about him being in the area, but I get a good knock up onto Galio. We're able to pick up the Ezreal and I just ult down this Gal- And now I'm able to get this Darius off of our back line. Able to take him down and now looking to get back onto this Kha'Zix over here. Able to get him too. And a really cool thing that you could do on Vi is even if you don't have any abilities up or anything, the least you could do is like if you run up to a teammate against the Kha'Zix, You'll unisolate him, so like, even if I didn't have any abilities or anything, I could have just ran up to the Caitlyn, and then Kha'Zix wouldn't have been able to get isolation damage. And although that's such a minor thing, it really, really negates Kha'Zix's damage by so much, because he really relies on that isolation damage. Like, if you've played Kha'Zix, you understand that without isolation damage, Kha'Zix is one of the weakest junglers out there. The thing that makes Kha'Zix broken is his isolation damage and people mispositioning. But if you can make up for your teammates mispositioning by helping them pretty much peel, then that can be a complete game changer against Kha'Zix. And that's the thing about Vi too, is because you're super burst, or you're super tanky too, and your second ability gives you good barriers, you can survive a lot of Kha'Zix's burst, so even if you do get caught out and you're a bit isolated, you can generally still survive a decent amount of time. Plus you have good escape with your first ability. So now I'm getting a reset in, and as for the build, there's a couple builds you can go. So the build I'm going this match is just Trinity Force into Guardian Angel and Steric's Gage. And that build is really good against squishy champs, against squishier comps in general. So most of them are pretty squishy. None of them really have much tank except for... Um, uh, the Darius has a little bit and the Galio has a little bit, but nothing really significant. But another build which you can go as Black Cleaver into Divine Sunderer. That's a really good damage build. And it's really, really good into tanks. So if you're running into like three melees that are super tanky, I'd recommend going that build instead. And you could also go Conqueror if you want. So my personal choice is Aftershock just because it fits my playstyle really well. But I know a lot of people prefer Conqueror, but that's really just up to your personal preference. And Conqueror is probably better in lower tiers because you need the damage to help carry more fights. But in higher tiers, you could just peel back for your teammates, and if you could do that effectively, you really don't need Conqueror, in my opinion. So now I'm resetting. I'm trying to reset and see if maybe I can stop the as well, but I decide to just go to this Baron. Unfortunately, our Diana does go down, but we still pick four people up. The Ezreal is pushing the top wave, but I think it's worth it to trade that top terror for a Baron. So now we're clearing down this Baron over here. Should be able to get this. Just gotta watch out for Ezreal ult. That's the only thing which we have to be careful of. Also, I should probably defend that mid turret over there. There's Ezreal ult. But I'm able to smite it down. And now I'm just looking to get a reset and get my Sterix gauge in. And once you get your Sterix and Guardian Angel and Vi, you become so tanky and you can survive so much burst. And it's really, really nice against other bursty champs. Like... Fizz, Zed, um, Vi does really well into those types of champs just because they can't burst you down even if they do land their ultimate. Like, a Fizz ultimate will hurt a bit, but it's not going to take you, like, it's not going to take out half your health unless they land their full combo on you and they're pretty fed. 
Same with Zed, because if a Zed ults you, they're kind of wasting their ultimate if they don't use it on, like, a backline squishy instead. But now I'm just pushing a side lane over here. Vi's pretty good at handling themselves in a side lane. I'm just trying to make it so the waves crash at the same time, so I'm not diving too far because I don't want to go down or anything. So I'm just making it so all three waves are crashing at the same time. That's really how you maximize the Baron buff. Notice how top wave, mid wave, and bot wave are all pushing in right now. And they really can't deal with all three Baron waves at the same time. So I still have this Herald over here. I'm taking down the inhib over here. And now looking to get the second mid inhib turret. Actually, I try and get this echo over here. Force out the ultimate and they go down over there. But now we have all three inhibs and we're just able to end just like that. But if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. I hope y'all are excited for the Lee Sin video, which will be coming on in a couple days. Because I know that's been very requested for a while. But that's going to be it. I'll see y'all in the next video.